the fight against terror may be closer to home than you realize. That includes right here in our own backyard. News 13's Russ Bowen investigates torture taxis. Ghost planes, flights used by private companies to shuttle detainees of the U.S. government. What happens to those people is a protected secret. Just how the detainees get to where they're going is also a mystery that some think they may have the answer to. So how long is this going to last? The war on terror. And the answer is for however long it takes. To keep America safe within and beyond its borders. But are there limits? We do have a responsibility to fight terrorism, but we have a responsibility first and foremost to, to, to do whatever we do in a constitutional context. The group North Carolina Stop Torture Now believes it's a program that's hidden in plain sight, as they say. In the Tar Heel State, inside planes that come and go routinely is cargo to combat terror. Well, we're very confident in the flight data that we have. Activists say on board are suspects, detainees who are flown to an uncertain future. The rendition program has, has become a huge mill for sweeping up, uh, beating, humiliating, torturing people and taking them very deliberately outside the reach of domestic or international law to places where no one knew where they were. The Council of Europe, an organization with 47 member countries, held its own investigation in June of 2006. It determined almost 100 people had been kidnapped by the CIA and taken to secret detention centers. In February 2007, the European Parliament found the flights total 1,245. The investigations were initiated after concerns the flights used European airports. Where they end up is a highly guarded secret. They're called black sites. It's at these black sites many contend torture takes place. It is extraordinary, hence the name Extraordinary Rendition. I think the American people would be extremely concerned uh, if we were facilitating other countries doing what uh, we say we uh, can't do. Stop Torture Now tells us to maintain such a large covert operation, there's a U.S. hub. They're housed in Smithfield and Fayetteville. They're maintained there serviced. Aero contractors and Centurion Aviation operate out of those airports. Stop Torture Now has tracked what it calls torture taxis with plane spotting and electronic surveillance. North Carolina has been sort of the launching pad for the aviation aspects of the torture program and uh, for me that role as critical infrastructure is key. Uh, without North Carolina, the torture taxis literally could not get off the ground. The claims are so concerning, three North Carolina congressmen co-sponsored a bill to prohibit private contractors from any role in detention or interrogation of detainees. Mel Watt, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, is one of them. And we don't know whether it has taken place. The administration has not acknowledged it. We asked the FBI to uh, look into a, an allegation that had been made uh, out in eastern North Carolina. Watts says he received an ambiguous response saying there was no active investigation. He's now waiting to hear from the U.S. Attorney General's office. They just simply uh, don't answer questions, don't respond to subpoenas, don't allow witnesses to come to be questioned. North Carolina state legislators have called for the state's own investigation. The SBI questions its jurisdiction. The matter has been passed on to the FBI with an offer to assist the feds. The New York Times and the Washington Post have written about extraordinary rendition. Books have been written about ghost flight claims and CIA front companies. But what hasn't been talked about is our possible link to all of this. How Western North Carolina is a potential player in keeping the terror taxis running. And coming up tonight at 11, we show you the possible link discovered to Asheville Regional Airport and have a response from the CIA.